Some of my other heroes I worked with, I got to work with June Ferre, who uh, was Granny in Tweety and Sylvester. And she was on um, Rocky and Bullwinkle. She played Rocky the Flying Squirrel. And uh, she's 90-something, and she still comes to work every day. Wow. Yeah, she has a driver, and yes, Miss Ferre, you know, and she's like, Oh, thank you. <laughs> but I loved her so much, and the day they introduced me to her, I was actually going to be working with her in a cartoon, and I was going, June Ferre. And it was like that, do you remember that song by, uh, oh, who were they? The uh, Psycho Killer. Oh, Talking Heads, yeah. Meeting her was like that. And meeting anybody or actually doing any kind of work that people think is great, it's like, you know, um, and you may find yourself, you know, behind the microphone with June Ferre. You may find yourself. You know, My God, how did I get here? How do I work this? And that's exactly what happens because your life just rushes before you and you go, wait a minute, I went from being like this little dope in Roslindale, Massachusetts that thought making noises was cool and, and I'm, now I'm sitting with one of the cornerstones of the industry. Oh yeah, this thing's rather flaccid. You know? <laughs> Let's switch. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, see, yeah, good one, yes. from flaccid to placid. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bad I mean. joke, and it wasn't white stealing in the first place. <laughs> so yes, you you have more questions, I'm sure. Well, I do, but you know, I'm feeling a little guilty. We, we've got so many people in here. You, you know, everybody, I mean, well, so all revved up for little questions time. and stuff. Yeah, I, I, I'm sure somebody has some questions. There's a room full of Qs, and I'm one A. <laughs> okay. Well, oh, I feel like the Ringo in a room full of John Lennons. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, some series, animated series, you hear that there's lots of scripting and stuff you can't ad lib at all. Like I would guess the commercial workers is like that. Have you ever worked on a series that let, that let all the voice actors sort of sit around and, and ad lib, and that's what they would end up animating? Uh, the best directors will absolutely wring it out of you if they have to, exactly what they're looking for. Um, they don't take chances that way. But the best directors also say, do you have any thoughts? You know, we got what we need. You were great. Do you have any ideas? And it's like, yeah, they kind of do, you know. And they'll either wind up on the floor, snipped out of the action, or they'll actually run with it. Um, I did a commercial... Uh, for Brisk Ice Tea a long time ago, and it was Babe Ruth, um, and it was like, you know, uh, I had to listen to him, he sounded like he swallowed a potato or a sod. <laughs> His real voice, yeah, because it was girthy like this, you know, <laughs> and he sounded like a sock throat. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's brisk, baby. <laughs> and so, um, when I did that, I, I thought, I gotta listen to these guys. So, then they did one with Rocky, Balboa, and somebody asked me, I said, I was in the, car, in the commercial, and somebody asked me, uh, hey, who did, who did Stallone? You know, and I go, Stallone did it. <laughs> like, as in Sylvester. He said, because I was going to say, that, that wasn't you, it really sucked. <laughs> he was trying to be him, and oh, what a disaster that is. He's like, hey, who did that? Who did that? <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was really supposed to still. I remember that was, it was the, really him, yeah, but, he, but it didn't. Stop motion animated. But right. it sounded like somebody putting it on, and it was him putting it on. I guess it's kind of clever and had him having a laugh. Uh, well, if you saw a dump truck pulled up in front of your house with like eighty money. million dollars, and stuff, <laughs> you want to make fun of yourself? So, sure. Uh, yes, <laughs> <laughs> To dump it out also. <laughs> so he did that, but the point of my story with that is uh, I did, uh, oh, Mickey, the trainer, 
You know, he's a wrecking machine, Rock. He'll knock you into tomorrow. <laughs> and, um, and at the end, I scream at uh, Balboa because he's into it. Hey, this is brisk, is he? Yeah. You know, and he's drinking, and I go, save some for the sequel. <laughs> And that was an ad lib, and they left it in. Yeah, they call it improvisation. I like that. And um, there was one, the Geico commercial that I had done about a couple years ago. It was, um, oh, who was it? Oh, it was, uh, yeah, Geico, and they used um, Elmer Fudd for the commercial. And it looked like a real Warner Brothers cartoon when it started out. I mean, it could fool you. And you go, hey, what are they showing a cartoon for? Because he was like, shh, be very, very quiet. I'm hunting wabbit. <laughs> and the guy goes, cut, uh, Elmer, it's rabbits. Wabbits? <laughs> he goes, no, rabbits. Wabbits. And uh, he goes, no, rabbits. And, and they didn't know how to end it. I said, well, that's nothing bit. That's right from the cartoon. Were you going to take it anywhere? And so I, I just walked off. He just leaves the set. You know, I don't care about any commercial. He's like, I gotta go hunting or whatever. But, but he said, uh, this director is starting to whoop me the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> and and the, the director, who was being a pain in the ass to me to see what I could come up with. You know, he's like, uh, it's rabbits, you know, and I was saying, what does this guy want, want to get his voice all over the commercial? You know, he's just the director. But it was part of the bit, so I was stupid. I was surprised. But, uh, but he got what he wanted, you know, and I was happy to offer it, but just as easily could be, you know, uh, stink up the joint if you make a wrong move or decision or whatever. So there. Got anything else, Junior? <laughs> okay. Talking about being an old man. What is that crap? <laughs> I'm way older than you. You see, you gotta, you gotta, uh, Never lose that spirit, a child spirit, because when the minute you forget how to play, that's the day you turn into an old geezer. Hey, my son has a question. I know you're Billy West. This is the Billy West Q&A. I am? Yes. Yeah. Who are you? Oh, you came in after my big intro? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm the panel moderator. My name is Ulysses Campbell. <laughs> and he is a great one. <laughs> As quiet as it's kept, I do have a demo. Okay, can you help me out? I can't help you out, but I'll listen to it. Ah, uh, dude, that's a help. <laughs> no, you know what? Let's put it this way. We're saving a seat for you. Hey, cool. Okay? That's what I tell anybody that wants to do voiceover. Because whenever I met my heroes, they, they would wink at you because they could see a spark. They could see that kindred being, a little version of them, like just wondering, and they want to talk to the wizard, you know? And, um, they recognize it, and they go, you know, we're saving you a seat. And I used to hear that, and I go, he's just pulling my putt or something, you know, I don't know. And uh, it, it was true. Everybody that I know acts like that, that, that sees talent or something.